Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now I recently purchased an Intel Arc A750 graphics card and in my original review I said that driver wise it's a bit of a work in progress, especially when it comes to playing older games. That said I found that using DXVK solved the majority of my performance issues in GTA 4, a DX9 title that without tweaks will stutter to the point of unplayability, if that's even a word. I want to expand a bit on DXVK today because not only could it help you out if you are having performance problems playing older games with Arc graphics, but you might find that other Vulkan supported GPUs could benefit from it too. DXVK is essentially a Vulkan based translation layer for Direct 3D 9, 10 and 11 games intended to get, let's say, Windows applications and games running or running better on Linux. It also works in Windows and considering that Vulkan can perform better than DirectX, it could prove essential for our Arc A750 here, especially in DX9 games, which, as it is, aren't supported natively by default and run through an emulation layer. Downloading DXVK involves heading over to GitHub, link below, and downloading the latest release, which at this point in time is 1.10.3, although I also used 1.10, but I'll explain that later. After downloading and extracting the file, you're going to have this DXVK folder, and inside there will be two more folders named X32 and X64. The one you open will depend on whether the game you want to try is a 32-bit or 64-bit game. PC Gaming Wiki will tell you which one the game executable is, as well as the API that it uses. This is also important. Let's talk about GTA 4 first of all. Now GTA 4 is 32-bit and uses the DX9 API, so inside the X32 folder, within the DXVK folder, we need to copy and paste the D3D9.dll from here to the location where GTA 4 is installed. DX10 games will require different files to be copied and the same goes for DX11 games. This table details the files you'll need to copy and paste and the names are the same whether your chosen game is 32-bit or 64-bit. If we open up GTA and put the MSI Afterburner overlay up on screen you can see that the game is using DXVK now as the API label has renamed itself to Vulkan instead of D3D9. A quick before and after will show you the difference that DXVK can make even in Windows here. When using the straight out of the box traditional DX9 API, the game stutters so badly that it's rendered literally unplayable. In fact, playing GTA 4 on an Arc A750 is one of the worst experiences I've had with this instalment of Grand Theft Auto. Switching back to the DXVK footage now and the average frame rate has doubled, and more importantly, the 1 and 0.1% low figures are higher, which translates to less stutter overall. We don't really need the figures to tell us this, as it feels and I'm sure it looks a lot better. The next game I wanted to try was The Elder Scrolls Oblivion. Now this one runs pretty well, right out of the box so to speak. Again it uses DX9, and you might be wondering why we'd want to improve the performance of a game that's already hitting 200 FPS. The answer to that one again lies with the 1 and 0.1% lows. See the average is fine, 200 FPS is solid no doubt, but the dips, drops and little freezes that occur every so often really take away from the overall experience. Now DXVK version 1.10.3 that I used with GTA 4 didn't work as well here. I got some weird flickering all over the screen which is a result I can only assume of due to some sort of driver conflict with the ARC drivers. That said, downloading the XVK version 1.10 that I mentioned at the start, and once again copying the d3d9.dll file from the 32-bit folder to the games directory, made a massive improvement to performance. My monitor's refresh rate, the 4K one I use today, is 60Hz, so the higher frame rate isn't really noticeable to me, but the percentile, or 1 and 0.1% lows do reflect what is a smoother overall performance. Performance that actually feels a lot more solid because we're not dropping frames all over the place. It may not be 100% perfect, but it's 1000% better. Not technically because that's impossible, and the figures don't back that up, but metaphorically of course. 
Last but not least, we have The Witcher 3, which is a 64-bit DX11 title by default, and one that I didn't really think would benefit from DXVK. In the case of this one, we do of course need to copy a different set of files to the game's directory, the ones detailed in the graph here, which I'll put back up on screen. Now we need D3D11 and DXGI this time around. When using DX11 the game runs nicely, but busier areas like this little stretch of market just within the city walls can play havoc with our frame times, which are represented by the graph underneath the performance metrics. See how it isn't consistently smooth. The best way to fix this is actually to cap the frame rate, but today is all about DXVK, so we'll be using that instead. Now switching from DirectX 11 to DXVK, or Vulkan, actually causes the average performance figure to decrease, but the 1.1% low figures are better, and I'd argue that this is a better way to play, because it's a lot more consistent this time around. The average performance might be a little worse, but the experience overall is a better one. Now I'd definitely recommend trying out DXVK because it's not just ARC GPUs that could benefit. If your card supports Vulkan, you're good to go. I'd also avoid using this with multiplayer games because, and I'm just quoting what's written on the GitHub site, um, manipulation of direct 3D libraries in multiplayer games may be considered cheating and can get your account banned. This may also apply to single player games with an embedded or dedicated multiplayer portion. Use at your own risk. Overall then, I'd suggest definitely trying this out for yourselves. You might have to try different versions of DXVK for different games if you have any issues, but it might really benefit your system's performance and it could potentially iron out any issues you are having. For ARC GPUs, it might be preferable at least until drivers get better, though some games may be beyond help without the help of this handy little tweak. And I'm sure you know which ones they are. Thank you very much for watching then, if you enjoyed this one leave a like down below, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully today I've helped you out with this. Let me know if you do try this out and how it impacts the games that you've tested it with and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.